Hello, my name is Thomas Rawlings and I'm a designer here at Auric Digital and I'm one of the developers working on Acton Cthulhu Tactics. And I want to talk you through a little bit of what you can expect from this upcoming title for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch and of course PC. Um, the game itself is set in the Second World War and if any of you know a little bit about Second World War history you might know that the Nazis themselves were actually quite obsessed with the occult. They sent missions all around the world trying to find out if there was any truth to the various rumours of maybe a hollow earth or a, a lost species or, or some secret books or codex hidden somewhere. And this game has the idea, well, what if they found something? What if there was something out there in the darkness waiting? And when the Nazis called, it responded. So what we're going to do is jump into the first mission of the game, which normally is the tutorial mission, but I'll just switch that off because you've got me to talk you through it. Uh, and then I can show you some of the core aspects of the game. So let's get stuck in. Your orders are to make your way behind enemy lines, then proceed through the forest to the appointed rendezvous point where you will meet Captain Harris, Sergeant Carter, and any other survivors from Operation Fallen Angels. So the game itself is a turn-based strategy game. If you played a game like XCOM, then you'll be broadly familiar with what's going on. If you haven't, then each individual member of your team, when you're in combat, you move them. Key things are the weapons you use, what abilities and that you've got, and also then the cover that you use and how you work together as a team. But in addition to that, we've got a bunch of interesting stuff of our own that we layer on top of that. We've got a system called Momentum. And that's really the uh, common pool of grit, if you like, that your characters draw from together. In addition to that, we've also got what you can see around here, a thing we call the shroud. And this is the effect of the various weird experiments the Nazis are going on. It draws in around the world and it's blanketing things and stopping uh, the Allies from finding out what's going on, so they send a special team in. Those team have wards about their persons which push the shroud away from wherever they go. That also gives us a really interesting set of tactical options, which I'll talk you through as we go into combat. So initially you can see I'm moving my two units together. That's a mode we call explore mode. It makes it easy to get around and find out what's going on. But the minute you hit the enemy, we move into combat mode. So you see here the enemy we've encountered and they move up. Now you'll notice first off that you can't actually tell uh, you've got question marks above these enemies' stats, and that's pretty key because they're within the shroud. We don't really know what they are. You know there's something there, but you don't know their strength until really you can get in close and find out what's going on. So first off, I'm going to select Ariane. I'm going to move her up. You see the shield icons there indicate where there's cover. So I really don't want to leave her exposed without cover. Um, that's quite a crucial part of the game. The other thing is... When you move your characters in our game, you select their facing, as you can see here. And that's really important because where they're facing is, that removes the shroud and makes those enemy units within that cone of awareness that makes them much more vulnerable. So as you can see, I moved her up, I've highlighted that unit there, and now I'm gonna use my Luger. Uh, and you can see that I've got a much higher hit rate against that closer unit to me, in part because it's closer, but in part because it's no longer within the shroud. So I fire off a couple of shots and miss, unfortunately. Um, but that's not the only thing I've got. I can bring up the ever-reliable Corporal Singh. Uh, he's carrying a shotgun, so he's bringing a bit more firepower to the party. What I'm actually going to do is bring him up first, and you can see I've highlighted those other units. Once they're outside the shroud, suddenly I can see how much health they've got. I can see a few more things about them, and that's really important for me to decide what tactics to use against them. So what I'm actually going to try doing here is I'm going to show you Overwatch. So you notice the Overwatch, that's costing me two of my momentum points flashing in the top left of the screen there. And again, when I go into Overwatch, I select an angle that I want to work from there. So let's keep a close eye on those units there. I've got a couple of action points left with Ariane, but there's not really much I can do. So, And once I go into Overwatch, that's that character taken care of. So the turn passes to the enemy. The enemy generally doesn't like coming out of the shroud. They realise they've got advantages within there. So they like to shoot me from within the shroud itself. And that leaves me vulnerable. So you can see the enemy there pulling back to take best advantage of, of where they can attack from. I don't want that. I want to expose them and I want to destroy them. So in my turn, I'm going to need to counter that. Now that Nazi unit there made a run for it. He went straight into the overwatch that I'd set on Corporal Singh. Singh opens fire. You can see that lovely slow-mo shot and that's one Nazi down. Uh, 
Right, so what I'm going to do now is move Ariane up. See where's a good place to put her. So again, by highlighting that unit there, I bring it back out the shroud. But they've put some overwatch in, so as she makes a run for cover, unfortunately the Nazis are taking shots as well. And because they're in the shroud, I don't know that they've done that. So I'm kind of going slightly blind there, which is why one of the big advantages to use the wards within your characters to remove the shroud as far as possible. So take a couple of shots there. I think I'm going to move, yeah, let's move Corporal Singh up and back her up and bring his firepower into play. You notice there I've got a pretty good chance of, yeah, and we there we go. So two Nazis down, two zero. Okay, so what I want to do here is, again, continue to move forward, but I've run out of action points, so we move to the enemy turn. Their units again, they're pulling back and shooting at me from the shroud, taking advantage of their own best position to be fighting from. But fortunately I'm in cover uh, and none of them really get anywhere near doing anything to me. So comes back to my turn now. You notice the momentum comes back. Uh, the momentum you get is from the highest leadership of the, of the squad you've got there. And then as you inflict more damage, throughout a turn you get momentum awarded to you so it's actually a great feed forward loop so the better you're doing the better you can do so Ariane makes a run for it up to the front although unfortunately they take shots at her but fortunately they're not very good either so you see they've got an 80% chance of hitting now because I've moved them out of the shroud and I take full advantage of that higher attack percentage um, and you'll notice my momentum in the top left has gone up one as well because I've just been successful in an attack. So I've now got three points of momentum I can play with. So what I'm going to do is move Corporal Singh up. So this unit here is now fully uh, revealed from the shroud. And I've got a couple of options. So they don't have the action points to take a shot with him. I'm going to fire the secondary weapon. Um, I should point out that obviously what you're looking at is work in progress. Uh, we're still beavering away on the game. So there's obviously little bits here and there that we're still working way on and need to fix. So I had three momentum points left and that gave me three chance to fire the secondary weapon. Not enough unfortunately to kill uh, that enemy unit but certainly gave him something to think about as he legs it away from me. Now you'll notice there Ariane came under fire and that white bar around the health bar was depleted. That's what we call luck and that's basically once you take damage, you initially comes off your luck and then it goes to your core health. Luck, obviously, if you've got armor, you're going to be more lucky. If you've got other kind of maybe supernatural protections, that's going to make you lucky. And so that's our kind of amalgamated thing. But once you take damage, your core damage, that stays with you. Um, so I move Singh up into, unfortunately, some Overwatch. But fortunately, again, he breathes through that quite well. Uh, and I've got a pretty good chance with the shotgun. And I'm going to take it. And bye-bye. 3-0. So all the enemy units are dead. I immediately move into explore mode and I head off wandering around to check out what else is going on. So let's see. So what you'll notice with the game is you, it's a mixture of exploration. There's the story unfolding and then there's combat and my abilities within that combat. With my team members as the game progresses, I'm able to improve their skills. I'm able to select the different directions I want to take them in. So they develop like in a role playing game as well. The game is coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch later on this year. And also it will be coming to PC as well to Steam. And in fact, you can wish list it now on Steam. So if you go to Steam Store, search for Acton Cthulhu, you'll find it. Please add it to your wish list. There's lots of exciting stuff to come within the game. In addition to that, we've got a podcast out. If you just search for Auroch Digital, you'll find it. And I go into a bit more detail about what you can expect from the game there and the influences and where we're drawing from for the game. I guess that's that's all the main stuff that I want to cover within this section of the video. Uh, suffice to say, check us out online, find out more and do follow us as we journey into the darkness of the Second World War to take on the Mythos powers and hopefully, for all our sakes, win.